Welcome back, you awesome people, to Cocktails and Consoles. It's Melissa, and I am so excited because Ryan's here. Woo! Thank you Hi. so much for joining. How's it going? Thank you for having me. <laughs> I am so excited because I've been wanting to feature Ryan's show, Randomly Ryan, for a while. Uh, he's just doing amazing things, not only with gaming, but also in bringing awareness to an illness that a lot of us don't have a lot of information about, which is lupus. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Um, yeah, it's not a lot is known about it primarily uh, just because it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, basically what lupus is, it's a chronic immune disease. It, it attacks your immune system. It takes away your ability to uh, defend yourself. Your, your body loses its ability to uh, defend itself from germs, bacteria, uh, viruses, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So you catch everything that comes along, and at the same time, um, usually like fibromyalgia uh, comes hand in hand with it, chronic fatigue. It basically ruins your whole life. Uh, yeah, the Lupus Foundation of America, um, they follow me on Twitter, and I love them to death because they're really making it a point to say that lupus is a mystery. It's not just, oh, just another disease we're dealing with. No, this is a big player. Lupus is a big player like cancer because it can become terminal. It, lupus does kill. It can kill just as much as cancer can. We don't know, uh, you know how it got started, where it came from, none of that. Um, and I try to keep up to date with uh, as much information as I can about it. And uh, Lupus Foundation, um, which you can find them at uh, lupus.org. Uh, they, they're such a wonderful group of people. Tracy Evans, uh, she's a friend of mine. She's the online representative there. Um, she's helped me to establish a link with them. And, uh, I run fundraiser campaigns, uh, on Twitch and on YouTube, uh, to try and spread awareness about lupus because my mother was diagnosed with it, um, five or six years ago, officially. And uh, it is so hard to get diagnosed with it because some doctors simply just, for whatever re rhyme or reason, don't even believe in lupus. They don't think it's real. No idea why. Um, and, like, I, I, I guess I don't know if lupus is just such a game changer or what's going on, but um, it's, it's very hard to detect if you have lupus. You just really have to pay attention to your symptoms and ask your doctor and see what uh, treatments you can um, you can get. The scariest thing about it all is that some of our tests we're finding out are insufficient to test for lupus now, so we're having to come up with other methods of testing for lupus. Wow, that's kind of scary. Yeah. So I know you've got a, a, a stream that you're about to do, I think it was at the end of this month, where you're going to be playing, what well, was it, 3 to 10? Uh, yeah, it's called Earthbound, and it's just an old classic game. Um, I've been wanting to do something with it on like YouTube or Twitch, uh, just as kind of a um, just for something fun to do and uh, to kind of like you know bring people together for a good cause. And uh, but yeah, uh, it is going to be uh, on May 28th through the 30th between 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. And we're basically going to be doing everything Earthbound has to offer, all the secrets, all the items, everything. Um, I've talked to the people over at Starman.net, so if anybody from over there sees this, hey, hey guys and gals. Uh, and we're going to try and raise, the goal is going to be set to $1,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be doing a game giveaway. Uh, two games uh, every day for all three days, so there'll be wow. six unique winners. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to win something, and uh, yeah, just have a good time. That is so cool. I See, this is part of what I love about YouTube, and especially in the gaming community, kind of surprised me, because it's, it's so far beyond just playing a game and entertaining with that. Like, people are taking this and using it for such good causes, like, you know, raising funding for a lot of charities that need it. So it's very awesome. Uh, that's why I was so happy to run across this guy. And <laughs> you actually tracked me down because of my, you You were one of the few people that actually read my, my Twitter bio. Yeah, uh, I saw the, um, 
when I started growing up my YouTube channel, I was just looking for other new YouTubers because I thought, well, okay, how am I going to network? And um, I found you and I've met so many cool people on this journey so far that have supported me. And I can't tell you all how thankful I am for networking with me and, and working with me. And I, I appreciate it a lot. So does my mom. Um, and yeah, right now I'm just kind of like a one man army for now. Uh, but I do have a whole team of people. We're getting ready to start a, uh, a big collaboration channel called Happy Heroes uh, that will target multiple uh, charities. Um, my thing with Lupus Foundation of America, that's just more of like my thing with Randomly Ryan and Happy Heroes with more like just, you know, charities for other people and everything. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really, really cool. That's cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing the Happy Heroes and for catching the, um, the, um, this is why I edit, and for catching the, uh, the charity stream is going to be really cool. Yeah, thanks. So I'm kind of curious. Oh. Like, what brought you to start a channel on YouTube? What brought me to start a channel on YouTube was, uh, I've been watching YouTube for years, and I, I moved around the country so much, I never really, like, had a place to set, settle down and, like, just relax and figure out what I wanted to do with my life, and, uh, I had an opportunity to go to Full Sail uh, University online, and she needed someone to take care of her when she uh, got diagnosed with her illness. And uh, so I just kind of came up here to kill two birds with one stone. Take care of her and, and get my degree uh, for creative writing. And uh, I started a YouTube channel in the hopes that I could spread awareness for lupus and uh, write for indie developers on their uh, indie games and get into the video game in this way by helping indie developers and uh, getting my writing out there using my YouTube channel, so. That is so cool. Well, I'm, I mean, your channel's been taking off and I'm so happy to see it. Thank I have no, I did no doubt in the world that you are going to be a big player on YouTube, and I'm very excited to see what you know the channel does for bringing awareness for lupus. Because I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there who watch YouTube who are struggling with the fact that they're, you know, they're living with something that is, it's a significant force, and yet it's something that the medical community is so far behind in being oh, able yeah. to understand. Yeah, they're. They're dumbstruck by lupus, but they're too pr uh, prideful to admit that, like, they just have absolutely no handle on such a brute force that has made an appearance. So, I mean, it's it's such a dangerous... The medications you have to take are just as equally dangerous as the, the disease itself. Yeah, that's typical that with, you know, dangerous diseases, typically have to fight fire with fire. Um, so, I mean, I'm just saying that lupus comes with all the hallmarks of a very deadly disease. And it's so crazy to think that so few people know about this thing and how, uh, how devastating it is. You are an awesome guy to be able to be there for your mom like this. I, I can't imagine what that's like, you know, for her and for you to support her through this, so. Yeah, my... My brother uh, can't be here to take care of her because he's got a wife and kids, mm. and um, my father uh, kind of bailed when things got intense, so um, I pretty much just took it upon myself to pick up the mantle and, um, you know, push, push through all the, you know, terrible things that have happened to us in the past five years and do all of this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, that wow. got to stick together, right? Exactly. Well, and I, I'm probably sure she, that drinking alcohol is something that her doctors would not like her to do. But in the spirit of your mom, I wanted to build a cocktail kind of in, in, I almost said in memory of her. That's, that gives a bad tone. In honor of, of your mom, whose name yes. is Carrie, correct? C-A-R-E? Yes. Yeah. Right. So every cause, every illness generally has an icon and a color. And for lupus, I believe the color is purple and the icon is mm -hmm. a butterfly, correct? Correct. Cool. So, for this cocktail, we are going to be building one with a couple of different ingredients. This one has a bit more steps than the other ones that I create, but this isn't a drink that you would normally, um, if you like me, binge on. This is kind of a, a special occasion kind of a drink. Right. So, 
To get us started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our blackberries and we're going to muddle these up in a separate container. Get about a good handful of blackberries and a couple of slices of ginger. Now the ginger, you don't have to worry, you don't have to skin it or anything like that because we're gonna strain it out. Next, take your cute little muddler and pulverize this as best as you can. Now this is a drink that we're going to actually have to strain twice because this one is gonna be a frothy drink and in frothy drinks you actually use egg whites. Ooh. So for those of you guys who are watching, if egg whites aren't your thing, um, you can just top it with some whipped cream. It's completely up to you. All right. Once that's good and muddled, we're going to introduce, we're gonna get some of the remnants off. There we go. Then we're going to introduce our alcohol. So the alcohol is gonna find those alcohol soluble flavors, compounds that are in there. The fun parts. The fun parts. <laughs> My yeah. favorite part. So we'll start off with an ounce and a half of rum. Any rum will do if you can try to get it the not so spiced kind, because it may take over the drink. And then a half of an ounce of Frangelico. And then a half of an ounce of a ginger liqueur. I would love to be a mixologist. So cool. Right? <laughs> I'm, you know, starting the YouTube channel, the only drinks I ever made before were my uh, cosmopo uh, co Cosmopolitan. Um, I'm actually learning this as I go. Really? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so I hope it looks a bit more polished than, you know, how I kind of see it when I go through it. Yeah. All right. Now that we've got that all blended together, then we're going to need to strain it into our mixer. It's an extra step, but it's a good one to go through because you don't want those, um, you don't want that ginger to clog up the drink and you also don't want the blackberries to clog up the drink. What do you mean clog up the drink? So since we have to strain this one more time, um, ginger has a lot of like fibers in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. that. I'm normally fine with it, but I'm okay with kind of chunkier drinks. But for an application like this, you want it a little bit smoother. Uh huh. So, this part may take a little bit of time. But thanks to the powers of editing. What kind of drink do I normally like? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a picky drinker. I'm really not. Um... I can drink an apple daiquiri or I can drink Ooh, uh, bourbon one. whiskey straight. I mean, I can nice. do it all. I'm not, yeah, I'm not a picky drinker. I'm really not. I can drink anything except for uh, orange Patron because Oof. I lost a dare and was forced to drink an entire bottle of orange Patron straight and I threw up. <laughs> so other than orange Patron, I am good with just about uh, anything. I am amazed you're still here. I oh god. Yeah, yeah I'm amazed I'm still here. Um, all my <laughs> drinking adventures in Florida were uh, yeah. Um, I've had tequila worm though. So. Oh god, what is that like? Um, I don't remember if that tells you anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Well said. I got so called. I got called a coward, so I just picked the shit up and slammed it and stared the guy in the face, and that was the last thing I remember. <laughs> yeah. Hats off to you, dude. That's impressive. So we're going to add a good amount of egg whites to this. For those of you guys who have taken... Oh, I'm trying to think of this. Physics? Chemistry? So the egg whites, Whoa. because it's a protein, it's going to trap air, and that's what gives us the bubbles. Okay. Now you can put this in a regular um, mixer. I put it into a mason jar because then you can really shake the hell out of it. And you're gonna need to, to get that foam going. And the last step, now that we got a good foam going, we're gonna add our ice. You wanna give the foam a good chance to build first. God, there's so much innuendo in this conversation. 
before mm -hmm. you add the ice. I'm just rolling through it. I mean, I'm noticing all of it too, but I'm just rolling through it. Oh, good. <laughs> this really is just to cool the drink. We're not going to be building any more foam. We want to preserve what we got. Wow, this is going to be really loud right next to the mic. Sorry. Now we strain it. It was the sound of fun being born. <laughs> that it is. That it is. So poor Ryan probably can't see from his angle because I'm recording this on my laptop. But hopefully you guys can see the foam that has been created. And that is all thanks to the egg whites. I'm going to lift it up here so you can hopefully see. I in frame. Aha! Uh -huh. Sweet. Now, you can leave the drink here. It's totally fine. If you want to get a little bit fancy, take some bitters, which is basically just a high alcohol uh, aromatic that a lot of people tend to add whenever you do um, bourbon or whiskey. But the nice thing about it is it will pick up color. I originally had this in a spray bottle because I had a stencil to do a butterfly outline. And it worked uh -huh. kind of well, but not well enough that it would show up on camera. But thankfully, oh. there's a backup, which is you just kind of dip it in, and you can draw the pattern. Another thing, too, is I've kept this from her, so this is going to be a surprise to really? her. Really? Yeah, she doesn't know that we're doing this. Oh, that's like she, so cool. She knows that uh, that I'm collaborating with someone and that there is going to be a uh, a surprise, but she doesn't know exactly what it is. So. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I hope she gets a kick out of this. Yeah. So now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but because of the foam, it hangs on... Yeah, I'll have to show you in the stills later. Because no, of the funny. foam, it hangs on to the color, so the image will actually hold together pretty nicely while, uh, while people are drinking it. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, I wonder if that's kind of how like Starbucks does uh, their like designs on their foam or whatever. You're absolutely right. Um, so, however, people, however baristas do it, you can do the same method for, uh, for drinks, but they have to be foamy drinks. Right, of course. Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Ryan, thank you so much for being oh, here. Absolutely love the opportunity to have you on the show. Thank and you looking, so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And looking forward to your charity stream. I'm going to be one of the first people on. Hope you guys hope to see you guys there too. I'll put links somewhere in the frame. <laughs> Thanks um, so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Cheers to you and cheers, cheers. to you awesome people. Thanks guys. <laughs>